Today is our final video in our five part series where we talk about the five things you need to use multi-tracks. Now in the previous weeks, we discussed one, what those five things were, and then we walked through each week and I provided some suggestions on how to choose those specific pieces of gear from computers to version of Ableton Live to MIDI controllers to audio interfaces. Today we're in our final video where we're talking all about in-ears and in-ear monitoring systems. Now I've got a lot of links in the description of this video, so I'll mention some of those as we go throughout this. Uh, but I say, let's dive in. You guys ready? Let's get to it. So first thing, the if we're gonna use multi-tracks, we're gonna use uh, tracks on stage and we have to use click. In order to use click, we have to use in-ears. What are in-ears? In-ears essentially replace floor wedges. If you've ever been in a venue uh, and you've seen uh, or used floor wedges, where they're basically speakers that point up at you so that you can hear yourself, um, then in-ears is, is kind of the next uh, update to that. And in my experience, it's a way better experience being on stage using in-ears as opposed to using monitors. Now, um, we've talked on Behind the Spacebar uh, podcast on Mondays a bit about why you should use in-ears, how to transition to using in-ears, and finally tips and tricks to improve your in-ear mix. I'll link to all of those uh, those episodes either as they come out or if they're out by the time uh, this episode goes live. But uh, you have to use in-ears if you're going to use tracks on stage because you're going to be using click and you have to be able to hear the click just in your in-ears and not in the house. Now, um, I'm going to go pretty quickly in this video, but a couple things that I always suggest up front. One, I prefer managing all in-ears at the sound board level at the mixing console level some folks create in-ear mixes within able to live send those out of their interface there's nothing wrong with that but what I would suggest is use the the tool kind of division of labor split the the load between different devices and use the tool that's best to manage that and I think a soundboard is best to do that so what I mean by that is we want to send the soundboard our click in our tracks and then at the soundboard we want to make the decision to only put click in in-ears and not in the house and put tracks in both in-ears and the house, okay? The second thing that I wanna stress is I highly encourage you to put everyone in the band, all the singers on in-ears. I know sometimes budget-wise, it's just not possible. And sometimes you just end up with the drummer having click and the drummer plays along the click and everyone follows the drummer. I get it, I understand it, that works. I'm just trying to hopefully tell you if at all possible, if budget allows for it, try to get everyone on in-ears. I think it's going to be a better experience. You get your own personalized, customized mix. Again, check out some of the videos where I talk about the benefits of transitioning to in-ears, but I would highly suggest you do it. Okay, a couple tips for choosing in-ears. If at all possible, choose custom in-ears. If you can't choose custom in-ears, you can get universal in-ears, which means um, you just grab in-ears and put them into your ear and they work. I would definitely buy uh, in-ears that are made for um, audio use. Uh, don't just use um, iPod earbuds. Don't try to buy AirPods Pro and say, hey, because they're expensive and they work with my iPhone, I can use them. You want wired uh, in-ear monitors. You don't want wireless in-ears. Now, um, you could use universal monitors, um, but I would suggest doing what I did here. Again, I understand budget is an issue sometimes, but if you can get custom in-ears, which means they're molded specifically for your ears. And what that means is again, you can pop them in, they fit your ear specifically. And the biggest reason you wanna do that is it gives you a good seal and cuts off um, all the sound around you. So you can isolate a little better. It's better for your hearing, it protects your hearing. And there's a lot of in-ear companies out there I'm just gonna cut to the chase. The company that I use personally, uh, that I like and suggest is AllClear. AllClear has both universal in-ears as well as custom in-ear monitors. Um, I believe I have the RSM quad drivers, if I remember correctly, and I love them. They've been great. I really, really like All-Ear in-ears. In fact, from Studio Stage students get a discount on purchasing all clear in-ears if you're a from studio stage student. Now, if custom in-ears are out of the question, um, then consider universal in-ears, which again means they're not custom made for you, but um, these are made for music. They're made for audio. They are tuned for audio. So they're gonna be a way better experience than just using headphones that you buy off Amazon um, that are made for listening. So I would 100% uh, check out AllClear. They're my go-to company. Again, there's a lot of other great companies out there. I've used other in-ears from different companies. Um, uh, but here's what I would suggest. If, uh, if you're kind of lining up different in-ears, compare drivers, compare price points. 
uh, compare the cost of getting, you know, uh, custom mainers made, look at all of these. And then if you find to where you're down to maybe two or three, let's say it's West tone, it's, um, ultimate ears and it's all clear. And you're looking at those three brands and comparing price point and go, okay, they're similar, similar driver, similar price. Here's the deciding factor for me. I call the company, I email the company with uh, and ask a question and whoever gets back to me the fastest is who I go with, right? Because I know the customer support's going to be there. I know the warranty is going to be there. That's something else to check out. But that's my tip when it comes to choosing in-ears, okay? Um, now, we've got in-ears, but we have to have a way to hear ourselves. So how are we going to do that? At the most basic level, you've got a soundboard, either an analog or a digital soundboard. And right now you've got cables going from your soundboard, from your auxes, from your monitor mixes, whatever you call it, um, going to floor wedges on the stage. If the cable that's going to your floor wedge is an XLR cable, then it's a simple switch to take those floor wedges away. Um, if you have enough outputs and monitor mixes, give everyone their own individual mix, whether it's mono or stereo. And then what you want to do is plug the other end of that XLR cable from your console um, into something like this, a headphone amp. This is the Behringer PowerPlay P1. Uh, it can do either mono or stereo, and you just plug from your console into this, your XLR cable. Uh, Personas has, and I've used the Personas one before, the HP2, it's great. Um, same deal. You can do either mono or stereo, uh, and, uh, you can have a power supply. It could also be, uh, battery powered as well too. Um, but you have uh, volume control. You can adjust pan again, if you're doing mono, um, but you essentially want to take those mixes from your board and plug into these headphone mixes so that uh, it boosts enough volume. You have volume control and you can plug your in-ears into that. Now, this is whether you have an analog console or a digital console. If you've got an analog console, um, um, uh, then most likely you're going to be talking to the sound engineer and saying, uh, guitar, up more, uh, you know, bass, down, drums, up, and communicating to them and letting your sound engineer mix your ears. And that's a great way because uh, if your sound engineer is trained and they're a trained mixer, I would much rather them have uh, much rather have them mix my ears than me mixing my ears myself. Now, if you have it and you have the budget, you could have your um, uh, monitor engineer, you could have your sound engineer mix your ears and purchase a um, a wireless in-ear system. And this is what a lot of people use. Uh, I've used the Sennheiser systems. Um, basically, almost every time I've performed on stage, it's been a Sennheiser wireless in-ear system. Um, I've used these and they work really, really well. Uh, and basically you plug out of the back of the console into the, uh, the back of the transmitter, and then you have a receiver that you keep on stage with you. So, right. We plug into here. We have the receiver, which we keep uh, on stage with us. We plug our in-ears in and the audio engineer mixes our in-ears for us, uh, which is, which is great. It works really, really well. So, um, if you're doing a sound engineer system, um, uh, where the sound engineer is mixing your ears, you can either do wireless in-ears. You could use a headphone amp like the P1 or the HP2 by Personas. The other option you have here is if you're using a digital console, something like the Behringer X32, uh, Persona Studio Live, even the Allen & Heath uh, channel uh, digital mixer here. Um, uh, essentially, most digital mixers, not all of them, have some sort of app that you can download on your phone where you can mix your own ears. And so in those scenarios, again, you've got to somehow get a cable to you that's probably going to go into a Behringer PowerPlay P1 um, or Personas HP2. So you would plug out of that digital console into this, but then you could use that app to mix your own in-ears. So your front of house audio engineer, she could just focus on mixing the front of house and, and what the audience is hearing and make that sound great. And then each individual band and vocal member could just open their phone, download the app to mix ears. And so that's a completely valid way to do that. Now I've done that with a Behringer X32. I've done that with the studio live uh, and it works really, really well. Now, if not everyone in your band has a phone where they could do this or um, you need changes kind of in the moment, we have a little extra budget. Uh, most of these digital consoles have their own personal monitor mixing systems. Um, so uh, Personas has their EarMix 16M. Um, uh, it lets you pull up individual channels and say, how much of that do I want? Apply a little EQ, do some fun things there. Uh, Behringer has their PowerPlay P16 system. Uh, works really similar and you plug into Behringer's kind of ethernet system you you create and build up there. Um, Allen and Heath, I've used this one before, the ME1, um, that again, lets you have individual control. Most of these are similar in settings. They have some different uh, versions. They have some different settings and features where you can do more channels than others and save presets. Um, if the company that makes your soundboard doesn't make uh, a personal monitor mix or you want something a little different, 
the kind of uh, OG, if you will, in the space is Aviom. So Aviom has a couple of newer models, the A320. I believe I've used this one before. And this one is brand new, the A640, um, that, again, have a lot of bells and whistles that you can do. A personal company that I've worked with before, again, full disclosure, they have paid me to do some work for them in the past, is Digital Audio Labs. Um, using the live mix, they have a CS Duo, uh, and then they have a Solo. Um, but these are really, really cool because two people can share one unit. They have talkback mics in them. Um, just the system that Digital Audio Labs has created, I think, is really, really cool. In almost every scenario uh, with Aviom and Digital Audio Labs, you have to buy some sort of head unit that you plug your inputs in, then you go Ethernet into these mixers. Personas, uh, I believe you can go just directly Ethernet into the mixer as well as the power play. Um, and, and they also typically, let's see if they mention on here. Yeah. So the, the, for the power play, you can even buy like the uh, digital snakes or the uh, input module. This is one here that you could add to like an analog board if you wanted to use a personal monitor mixer, um, which, which could be a good solution to help you again. Uh, mix your in-ears and do that all by yourself. So if you've got a digital console, uh, an Allen & Heath, Behringer, or Midas, uh, Personas, or some sort of digital console, do some investigating to figure out, one, do they have an app? And if they have an app, you could save some money and just buy uh, a headphone amp uh, and mix your own in-ears. But if you're on a really good, tightly integrated system, if you've got a Personas console, consider Personas ear mix, Behringer console, Midas console, consider power play. Midas, I believe, has a version of this as well, too. Um, Digital Audio Labs is my favorite out of all of these. And again, Aviom is kind of the old standby. And Allen & Heath has um, their ME1 and ME500 uh, as personal monitoring systems. But if you're going to use tracks, you've got to use in-ears. And if you're going to use in-ears, you got to have some way to feed the in-ears volume. Uh, so you need some sort of monitoring system to make that happen. You can either have your front of house engineer mix in-ears for you and just get a headphone amp. You can mix your own in-ears. Um, uh, you could have uh, you know, wireless in-ear as well too if your uh, front of house engineer is going to mix ears. You can mix your own ears either uh, using a uh, phone, like a phone or tablet based system using a headphone amp um, or using a personal monitoring system either by the company that makes your board or at a live mix, um, Digital Audio Labs live mix or an Avion personal monitoring system. Now, um, I said there's five things you need to use multi-tracks, but there's a couple additional things that you need to use multi-tracks. And I've tried to make it really simple for you. Things like click tracks, guide cues, a tracks template, so you could quickly format songs and build sets. I put all those resources in one place and made them completely free for you. In order to grab those, you could go to from studio to stage.com slash free, download all those track sources, it, uh, resources, and included in that is my free gear guide. So if you're looking for suggestions on monitor mixes for um, in your systems, all of that is included in that gear guide. Uh, all you have to do, head to from studiosage.com slash gear. You'll see all the resources listed there that you could share your name and email to check that out. Now, if you're interested in content like this, I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central on the YouTube channel. It's a ridiculous amount of content, but it's so much fun. I love doing it. And if you want to check that out, then you've got to hit subscribe on the YouTube channel uh, and then hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post new content. And you can click through the notification if it seems like something you're interested in. If not, ignore it and uh, you can watch one of the next videos. Now, I hope to see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central. If not then, then maybe the day after that or on one of the future videos. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.